Hi everybody, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes. I've had this toast rack on the shelf for quite a long time now, just waiting for some kind of purpose, and as chance would have it, I got a message through Patreon asking if I had any refurbished toast racks for sale, with a view to upgrade it with a mechanical clicky keyboard, which to be honest, I didn't know existed, so that's quite exciting. We're going to get one of them ordered and refurbish this thing fit a mechanical clicky keyboard and build ourselves a nicely upgraded, pimped up toast rack. As you may have noticed, this is in pretty good condition. It's quite an early one looking at the serial, probably a issue 6k board. It has all of its keys and all of its feet, but no screws, but I'll get some new screws to put in. Um, one of the feet is a bit squashed, but I'm not too fussed about that. Uh, the keyboard ribbons aren't looking too bad, but that doesn't really matter because we're going to be fitting a new modern clicky keyboard, so I'll keep that membrane for maybe another project sometime. There's a date code written on here, stamped on, some kind of paint. Uh, I'm going to do my best to protect that while cleaning it, don't want to rub that off, it's a nice original feature. As for the other bits and bobs that generally go missing, we've got these keyboard mounts, or supports I should say. Um, this one's in pretty good condition, but the other one's broken. Uh, I think it will still serve its purpose though, and rather than replace it, we'll just leave it where it is. Okay, there should be four screws holding this motherboard on, I think at least one of them was missing. Uh, but we'll get it out of the case and start dismantling everything. The reset switch is slotted in on the side here, you don't need to desolder it, um, people have done that, I've seen, you just need to pop it out from the case, lift it out upwards. The 7805 regulator needs to be unplugged, that's attached to the heatsink, and then the board should be free to remove. So there we have it, it is an issue 6k, the ROM chip's missing, bugger, never mind, we'll burn a new one, um, and it has this toroid fitted which is really wonky, it's actually sitting on top of the PAL chip, and it's kind of stuck on with this putty that they used, looks a bit like chewing gum, um, so I'm unable to make it sit uh, within its marking on the PCB. So I'm actually going to pull that off and replace it, re-solder it, and glue it down in the middle of that ring so it's not sitting on top of the chips, because that's kind of doing my head in. Here is our 7805 bolted to the toast rack heat sink for heat dissipation. It's very dusty, we'll have to clean it, and there is a bit of paint flaked off, but uh, I'm not, I'm not going to try and repaint it, I'll leave it as it is. Uh, the case is actually cracked on the back here, and I am going to have to do something about that, because it would be fairly easy to... Uh, snap that whole piece up uh, in an accident, so we'll be gluing that back together. Okay, let's dismantle it, which will allow us to clean everything. So once they're out, we can kind of lever it out. The voltage regulator comes with it. We're left with a plastic lower half of the case and the heatsink separate to it. It's quite a nice, hefty, weighty bit of metal and uh, does give the Spectrum a nice aesthetic. Uh, part of the reason I think that this is the most sought after variant of the Spectrum. Right, before we plug it in and see what it's doing, I just want to check the resistance from the 5 volt supply to the RAM chips to ground, and we're getting about 300 ohms. It's not too concerning, so I'm happy to plug it in using a current limiting bench power supply. I'm definitely looking for a current draw less than 1 amp, uh, even with the Dandonator plugged in the back. As you can see, we're getting about 870 milliamps, and the thing boots up nicely, so we've got no repair work to do. Uh, that's, that's pretty good news. We might as well run a diagnostic ROM while we're at it. Uh, we've got an unknown or corrupt ROM because we're running off the Dandonator, that's fine. Um, all the other RAM tests pass, uh, cool. We can even run a game and play Dizzy. Uh, so the keyboard is working and everything else seems fine, this this machine would be good to go, uh, but we're going to refurbish it all the same because we want it to last uh, much much longer. Let's start by changing the capacitors, uh, I'm not going to do this in great detail, you've seen it happen a million times before on the channel, and um, there we go. There are two um, axial capacitors on here, no wait, radial, radial, I, I always get that mixed up. Um, they don't need to be radial, so um, I'm going to remove them and just check that the, um, the the joints here for axial capacitors are connected up just the same as if we'd fitted radial, and yes they are. So I'm going to fit blue axial capacitors in their place, which I think um, the later 6U boards did have axial capacitors fitted too, so no problems there. I will mention that some of these caps are an absolute pain to remove. 
or at least the joints were a pain to clear because there's just uh, loads of heat dissipation around some of them, some of the grounds. Um, so just be careful, watch out for that if you're recapping your own toast rack. Um, you really need to put a lot of heat into those joints to get them to clear. Okay, lovely, that's all done. We're looking pretty good. So let's take a look at the toroid and see if we can neaten this up. From this angle you can really see how wonky it is. I don't know if they sort of creep away over time because of that putty, because I can't imagine they'd be happy fitting them like that in the factory. Uh, who knows, let's get it desoldered and, and get it ripped off. There's nothing too clever going on here, it's just two wires wrapped around a toroid, so we've got four joints to desolder, um, two at one end and two at the other, and the wires will pop out, and we can just pull the toroid off from that uh, putty. There it goes, nice and easy. Um, I'm just going to rip this off. Uh, kind of a pain to do an, a neat job removing all this stuff, so I used alcoholic spirit, toothbrush, kind of scraped away at it, trying to be careful not to remove any of the solder mask on the board on the top. Um, eventually I did a good enough job, happy to uh, put the toroid back over the top with some super glue. In order to get it to sit in the right place, I had to remove one coil of the wires from around the toroid. Uh, to give me enough to play with, uh, I just had to cut the wires back a little bit and strip them, uh, but then I was able to make it sit just right. don't really know the physics if removing that coil would have uh, negatively affected the function of the toroid in any way. Um, I don't think it has a, a, a really important role in the in the machine. It's actually to prevent noise from going back into the into the power supply into, into the into the grid. So I'm going to try and make sure this thing doesn't move around again. Uh, just smash a load of Loctite on there and hold it down. Um, looks fairly neat. We can solder it in place once that had dried or cured. And we have a much nicer looking arrangement there. Alright, let's bring the attention to the ROM chip or lack thereof. We're going to have to burn our own ROM chip here. So I've bought some M27C256 EEPROMs. These can be programmed and reprogrammed if you have a device to clear them using UV light. Um, I got this one under the microscope to have a closer look because I quite like that there's a window on the front you can see all the gubbins inside. In order to program it we're going to use the XGECU, this USB device. Uh, this thing's brilliant by the way, I recommend getting one if you're going to ever need to program your own ROM chips. It's just a case of loading in the type of chip that you're programming and uh, loading in the ROM file you want to burn. I'm just using a standard 128k ROM that came with the toast racks when they were sold originally. Popping it in because there's a socket there, hallelujah, and let's power it up and see what happens. Not forgetting to plug in the 7805 because nothing happens if you don't do that. Okay, here we go, let's see. I have been known to cock this up in the past, fingers crossed. Hey, that looks right to me. Right, while we're working in this area of the board, I want to give it a quick clean because I uh, couldn't help but keep noticing how dusty it was. So, toothbrush, alcoholic spirit, let's give it a once over. I'm also going to go over the edge connector with the fiberglass pen. Um, as someone suggested in the comments, you could also use a pencil eraser to do this. Um, I'm kind of uh, on the fiberglass pen bandwagon though, I really like it, I think it's really effective. Alright Brill, that should conclude all of the electrical work that we need to do on this PCB. Uh, let's take a look at the case which is going to need a clean up. You might think on first glance it doesn't look too bad, but take some of the keys out. Uh, they just pull off, so don't be shy, give them a tug. And you're going to find hair and dust and crap underneath there. It really does need a clean, it needs to be fully disassembled, ran under hot water, soapy water, and each of those keys needs cleaning individually. Yeah, not a pretty sight. So let's get to work taking all these keys out and then we can go and drop them all in the sink. Now I know I just said don't be shy, but be very shy with the spacebar. There's some very thin bits of plastic on, on, that, on that piece which break really easily uh, because there's a metal bar hooked behind them to give it its lever mechanism. Uh, here we go, let's have a look. Look how thin that is. Really easy to break them and then you've got the hassle of finding a new spacebar because I don't think you're going to be able to glue that back on very effectively. So there it is, that's looking pretty cruddy and that spacebar lever is really rusty so a bit of de-rust on that I think. We'll leave it overnight and hopefully we can clean it up and make it look shiny. We also need to remove the keyboard backplate and membrane before we should really put it in, in water. We're not going to need to replace these because the 
new keyboard we're putting in replaces the membrane and the back plate, which is nifty. There are two clamps holding the keyboard ribbons down too. We'll remove those and then the whole thing should come to pieces. Okay, here we go, we remove these clamps, the keyboard membrane comes out, and then you have this bubble mat thing underneath. Uh, we're going to need to keep hold of that because that is going to be pressing the mechanical keys on the PCB of the new keyboard we're fitting. So let's take that off, keep it safe, and be careful not to flip the case over just yet because there's all these plungers loose in there now. Uh, we'll remove this rusty bit of metal for this spacebar lever, get that in some de-ruster and clean it up nicely hopefully. Let's have a closer look because I want to do a back to back of before and after it's de-rusted. Okay, let's flip the lid and look at all these plungers fall out. Don't lose them because you're not going to find them very easily. Let's bundle it all up, get the keys and the plungers together and the two halves of the case. We can go and put them in for a hot soapy bath. I'll also give every key individually some attention to clean the dust from the 90 degree angles there. You can see where the raised part of the key is extruded. Right, let's see how well I did. Oh yes, that's looking much better. Um, the, this case has had a bit of a soak in hot soapy water and a bit of a wipe down and a scrub with a toothbrush and it's looking miles better than it did before. Much happy with that. And just to show you what I was on about with the keys, I've got in there with my nail and a, and a cloth, clean the dust from around the, the edges and the corners, it looks miles better. Uh, these plungers as well weren't particularly dirty but they've had a soak and they're good to go. So in order to reassemble you need to put a plunger in uh, from the back, hold it in place with your finger and then you can push the key down on top of it firmly and that's one key assembled. Lovely, there we go. Lovely little pressing action. Some of the plungers are unique to the key, just the longer ones at the edge and the return key. I think every other one is identical and you can mix them up as you like. And just repeat the process with all of these 8 million keys until the keyboard is fully reassembled. I uh, hope you took a picture of the keyboard layout before you took all those keys out. Lovely, just the space bar to go. Let's have a look how the de-ruster got on. Mmm, yes, miles better. can hardly believe that's the same bit of metal. So there are a couple of slots for it on the underside of the keyboard. We can pop it in there and then it kind of flops down through that hole and we can hook it onto those thin brittle tabs on the spacebar key. This is a little bit fiddly because you also need to get the key to slot onto the plunger but once it's all put together you get this nice pressing action um, works just right. That's looking great. Um, let's put the whole thing back together again then we can get onto the interesting bit and build this clicky mechanical keyboard in. Um, as I mentioned before I am going to use this uh, keyboard support because I think it works just fine. Pop the PCB back in. Replace the reset switch in its little uh, area over on the left side of the case. And we'll find our toast rack heatsink. Uh, the 7805 will need reattaching to it because we had to remove it to clean the heatsink. So we pop the washer on and the nut and tighten up the bolt, we'll be good to go. A little bit tricky to do this without the regulator rotating around to the left, but we got there in the end. Let's replace those two screws we removed earlier and we can reattach the regulator. Be careful to put this plug back on the right way around. Hey, nice, that's a proper job. Okay, what about this special keyboard PCB? Let's have a look. Look how shiny it is, I can't even light it, it's like a mirror. You can buy this in a kit form and put it together yourself. Um, I was tempted, but it's, it's literally like one or two pounds more to get it assembled and for the hours it would take to solder this thing together yourself, it's worth paying for. It's by Ginger Electronic by the way, uh, you might want to look them up. I have to say it was very reasonably priced. I won't pretend to know the function of all these chips, I haven't tried to reverse engineer it, uh, I assume that 
a lot of these diodes are to do with anti-ghosting so you can press as many keys as you want at the same time without any phantom key presses happening. All we're really interested in is these nice clicky buttons and hoping that they'll give a nice tactile clicky feel to the keyboard once it's all assembled. Okay, it's really important that you have the bubble mat for this because that's the bit which is going to press those buttons. You want one that isn't too perished, uh, otherwise you're going to have some finicky keys. So the rubber mat goes on first, then the PCB goes on face down and you need to screw it in using the same screws which you removed when we removed the back plate. Um, there's also these little riser washers, little plastic things that need to go in uh, if you had a plastic back plate on your toaster. Yeah, that sounds and feels really good actually. Um, some of the keys, like the return key, weren't great. So I did replace the, the bubble mat with another one and everything was perfect after that. These ribbon cables are really sturdy so I'm not going to have any issues there. Plug them in and we're going to put everything back together, we should be good to go. We could sew it up here but there's one more mod I want to do real quick. Um, it's a audio balancing mod. We need to replace resistor 115 with a 1.65k resistor. And this helps to balance the level of the audio from the AY chip with the level of the audio from the beeper. It's quite an easy mod to do. Um, you can buy a little bag of these resistors from Retroleum if you don't want to go to Farnell and fill up a basket with bits and bobs. There we go. There are other mods you can do. You can do a jail bars mod to try and reduce the jail bars effect. Um, but I'm happy with this as it is. I'm going to get these shiny new plus screws in there. Thanks again Retroleum for selling me these. And button the whole thing up ready to go. Lovely. That is a pimped up toast rack. It's a mean machine. And the keyboard is a delight to use. So I'm going to write myself a little program with it just for fun. Let's define n as 0. We're going to print please subscribe, please do subscribe, um, and beep a little beep at the uh, pitch of n. Add 1 to n. Go back to 20 and repeat. Here we go. Ha, <laughs> that's class. Right, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe.